Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of AIW's The Card is Going to Change. Before we get started on this week's show, in which we will actually cover the entire card of Hell on Earth. If you listened in last week, we got off the rails a bit. We talked about so much else. We talked about the hell of Hell on Earth, but this week we'll actually talk about the matches. No ripping rails, though. We also uh, want to give a shout out to our sponsors, as we always do before we start the show. Thanks to Pollyanna DIY. Thanks, of course, to Angelo's Pizza for keeping us fed and providing pizza for our live event shows. And thanks to our friends over at independentwrestling.tv, where you can stream past AIW shows. And with that, uh, we welcome in our, I guess, panel is what we'll call it here. We have the Bone Collector, Dominic Garini. Uh, the Duke chiming in, as well as Alex Worldwide Keller, and of course, as always, AIW owner John Thorne and myself, Steve Guy, your moderator of sorts. So we'll just we'll get right into the card here. Mentioned the Duke, and you led things off at Hell on Earth. Your team, I should say. We did. I don't even remember. You it was did. so long ago. You guys. Oh, that's right. We did. Uh, it was us. Tag, Duke Money. Us and Young Studs. Young Studs and Jollyville and production. Yep. Two. I feel like the production. I feel like this wasn't supposed to open, but maybe it was. I can't remember. Derek like, Director and Dan Housen. I don't. Yeah, it was. We didn't get moved. Okay. Yeah, you guys didn't get moved. I don't think this show. I didn't think anything. Got <laughs> I usually like to one. put the Duke in the middle, you know, because he doesn't start it out too hot. So, you know, <laughs> absolution. <laughs> I will say this crowd. Was, this crowd was hot. <laughs> the crowd was hot for everything. This is top to bottom. Uh, I mean, 2018 in general was a fantastic year for our shows, but to me, this was top to bottom. Uh, I guess one of the best, if you could say. Because well, they knew they they knew everything. There they was, knew yeah. they knew it was going to be the last show. They knew Magnum, Magnum was, was retired. They they were in on pretty much everything that was going on. Yeah. Uh, I except I think except for the Le Park thing. You know, yeah, with, the, know with the meet and greet, they knew our cat wasn't coming. They so they knew, and I think you had. Like you usually do, but I think you oversold it. We're putting out negative Facebook posts and tweets before the show, talking about I hope it's not a disaster or something. So you well, know, trying we, to garner. We did some actually. No, I'd never oversell it. Yes, you do. No, I don't. We did actually talk about Magnum having to retire on an episode before this show even uh, came out, or before <coughs> we even got to the show. I guess we talked about it. It would have been the week after. I just we I just wanted to point out something that I forgot to mention last week during my. Renegotiations with uh, Mr. Park. He 100% thought the crowd was only there to see him and nobody else. <laughs> Did you tell him the guy was retiring? <laughs> I, no, he I, didn't care. Is LA Park part of the Mexican law offices of Chandler Park? Uh, I don't. I don't think Chandler Park is is around anymore. Yeah, I don't longer. think he's around anymore. And so. uh, I did. I did clarify in between. Um, it was uh, Ethan Page was booked. Last, he was booked last minute for the tapings in Mexico to uh, to debut with with Matt Seidel. I think it was like probably like something that was was written like because something something went wrong and they they had him come in like on a day's notice. Okay, well, so Duke Bunny, you guys had a match. We you did. Went. We had a victorious match. You did. Little shenanigans. Little. Uh, Little eight man disaster, some dives, all that good stuff, and we came out on top as we usually do. You enjoy being a part of that grouping with Manson Jock? Yeah, yeah. Is that one of your? Uh, Why wouldn't I? It's, well, I mean, you've, every, every, you've been every, in the corner for a lot of people, a lot of things. Is that is this becoming kind of slowly like one of your favorites? They're all because diff- of the personalities. They're all. I enjoyed all of them. They're all just. They're all very, very different. Yeah. Manson Jock are just very. Uh, you know, do whatever, kind of roll with it. Let's just go have fun. Let's not do too much, whatever. Um, Tolar, I had to work real hard because I had to. He is the ultimate, much like as we discussed last week, Razor, Razor Sharp. Sharp. Yeah. He's the ultimate. He's just, a, he wants to be a babyface. He wants to be that guy. That's how he wants to wrestle. And so I really had to work hard to get him over as a heel and to convince him as well. Yeah. And BJ is just. A, a, a killer right. so that's great and Eddie is just so f- freaking scary good at everything mm. it was just it was just so much fun it was fun working with all of them 2019 uh, we still don't know where Mike Tolar is no, still, no. I don't 
if uh, anybody has an update on his whereabouts. I'm I'm working on doing. getting milk cartons made. Yeah. I'm very worried. We'd love to uh, hear from or about Mike Tolar. If we anybody has Mike. information, please reach out to us. Uh, match two, we talked about uh, MJF. He had a cancellation. Tracy Smothers <laughs> didn't make it. Surprise, surprise, as you covered a couple weeks ago, in comes Swaggle. And, uh, Got him there. I, I, still, I still cannot believe, for whatever reason, because he, he originally did not take the date because he thought that he would be booked at the Wrestlecade convention. And I guess they just didn't call him. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. Maybe he couldn't reach the phone. He, he like he like not booked. He left it on his countertop and he couldn't reach. He it. like specifically didn't take that date because he's like, oh, I got Russell Cade, brother. And then, like they just <laughs> he just assumed that he had Russell Cade, and I guess nobody booked him for Russell Cade. Uh, and then I was just like, well, dude, I already booked the card. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, uh, you don't need to be on every one. And then because like after he didn't get Russell Cade, he's like, are you sure you don't need me? Are you sure you don't need me? And like. You know, I'm always trying to be budget conscious, and especially with the you know the WrestleMania weekend stuff coming up, and you know I, I I'm I'm trying to be prepared for the worst case scenario, so I'm trying to cut corners where I can cut corners right now, uh, which is why it was so difficult to give up that 50 percent of the meet and greet to the park. But <laughs> right. Um, anyway, you know, like I could not believe, like it was just like it was one of those things that was like destiny or whatever. You know what I mean? Because like if you try to fly somebody the day of. It is astronomical if you can even buy it. Yeah, especially Thanksgiving weekend. And I looked in his flight. It was exactly what I pay all the time, which is why I didn't want to give him one off because his flight is always fucking really expensive anyway. Uh, but it was, I think it was actually, it might have been a little cheaper than it usually was the day of. And, uh, you know, I was I was able to get him in. Um, and, you know, that worked out to be a, a good surprise. I think, you know, Swaggle is it's so weird that, Hornswoggle is an AIW regular at this point, but uh, yeah, I think it got a it got a pretty good reaction, you know, and they had a fun match. Yeah, All maybe the- uh, six seven years from now when he gets booked at his next Fed, he'll say. Hey man, I know what I'm doing. I had a 10 year run in Cleveland. Yeah, <laughs> How about your AIW I think bet? I think that's I, I think that's pretty much all he's got to look forward to in his uh, career right now is a 10 year run in Cleveland. I don't oh, know. Uh, no WrestleCades in his future. That's for sure. <laughs> he can't even get booked at WrestleCade, man. <laughs> <laughs> I turned him down. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe you know, maybe he'll be looking at a 10 year run in the Cleveland territory. Yeah, maybe we can get him booked in a uh, couple Cleveland independent films. Put that on his resume too. Nah. I did. I did uh, update his IMDb though to put his contact info in there because I signed up for IMDb Pro. Oh, you put it in there? Yeah, because I go, dude. Why don't you? Why aren't you trying to get some acting gigs, man? You're in the Leprechaun Origins, and uh, he's like, oh, fuck, I don't know. And the Muppets movie too. He's like, he's like the they, Muppets movie. Yeah, yeah, one of them. Yeah, the mo- like the most oh, recent one. Oh, there's like one. nine of them. The most recent one. The most recent of the new Muppets movies. Oh, yeah. really? And I was, he's like, he says they send him like SAG insurance all the time. Does and stuff. he have SAG insurance? No, he's like oh, I ain't fucking paying for that. I'm like, dude, that's like some of the best insurance on the planet. Ever. But you can, but you, gotta, you gotta work though, don't you? No, you just, if you get accepted, you just gotta pay your dues after after. Yeah, I thought you had to. I thought you had to be active though. Still, no. Oh, all you do is so that one. episode of Friends when Joey lost his health insurance was all bullshit. Yes. Oh man. Well, yeah, because well, because that's the, that's part that's, part that's the rumor why Mick Mick Foley did the. ICP big money hustlers movies is because he could get SAG insurance for for doing it. Well, yeah, and then I think Nash has always talked about being in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles too. That's how he got SAG insurance. Well, he's been in a bunch. He's been in a lot. Of yeah, stuff. but yeah, I think this one, he's been. I mean, if somebody could clarify it. But well, I, yeah, Terry Funk. Uh, yeah, he started taking those acting jobs, and I guess he. I think it does run out at some point because like every couple of years he like yeah. do like a TV gig or like some right. movie shot or something like that, and like that's why like he'd like do shit every once in a while so that he could have the SAG insurance. So yeah. Swaggle, get on it, and then, you know, hit the deathmatch circuit, bro. Maybe he Build can your help, legacy. Maybe he can help Nash and be in the next Magic Mike movie. Yeah, but I, so I, I, put his, uh, I put his contact information on IMDB Pro if anyone's uh, trying to get Swaggle in a, in a film. You know, he's ready to work. Wow. Well, good for him. Maybe you. they'll remake Under the Rainbow or something, that movie with all the midgets. I don't know what that is. Midgets kind of makes it's me It's a Chevy Chase movie. Really? But it was after he got off the drugs, so it's not as funny as the other ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I never even heard of that. Chevy Chase, Carrie Fisher, it's a, and a bunch of midgets. Well, look, check it out. He does body slam Dave the Potato, and everybody really enjoyed that in this match. <sighs> Dave the Potato, That's one what last drove ride. Dave into retirement, probably. Dave. Yeah, he'll be back. 
Uh, next one, we go with <coughs> KTB, Dr. Dan, Josh Bishop, and Dom Garini. Poor Dr. Dan, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, he's just uh, he's having to fill in for his client all the time. And uh, I don't know, from what I'm hearing, his client might be, might be abandoning, him, abandoning the territory for a while. Oh, wow. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Dr. Dan, though, like at that point when Ethan Page gets pulled last second, you know what I mean? It's just like... Uh, you know, Doctor uh, Doctor Dan is a is an easy, uh, affordable, like sustain. You know what I mean? Like just you know, suitable guy to put to put there uh, in a four way. So he has a face you just want to punch repeatedly. Doctor Dan got the call for the replacement here. Uh, Dom, Dom, you were in this one. I was. What? Uh, you got any words? Talk first before. I mean, I'm, I'm going to ask you about uh, brawling with Josh Bishop, but. <laughs> Speak to KTB like about. I mean, that's a mammoth of a man, and the yeah. things that he can do. He's one of those rare specimens, I guess. Strange you know. guy, though. Strange Stra- guy. Interesting guy. Yeah. Strange guy. Super athlete, and uh, you know, just uh, overall, like, I still always remember getting that. And I, I say this every time we talk. I just remember getting that business card in Orlando. Um, but Kyle, Kyle's kind of like one of those rare breeds of athlete. That he's so big, but he moves so well, and he does things that you just don't expect a guy of that size to do. Yeah. So it, it's very unique, um, and I, you know, I think he's one of the kind of guys that we brought in last year, um, back in April. You know, when we started kind of bringing some new new faces in, and I think the the crowd's taken to him. You know, they started kind of his big chant. You know, he comes out and they chant from the woods. <laughs> okay, so two two things before you go on. Uh, one thing. Uh, is you know I'm running around or whatever, and I come out from the gorilla position, and nobody at my job really knows what I do. Okay, like I try to like I always talk about I try to live my life like a pie chart, keep everything separate. Uh, I come out from gorilla position to get some like get a student or get somebody, and this girl from my work is just standing right there, and she's like, John, what are you doing here? And I was like, uh. What the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> is is the better question? And she's like, oh, she's like, I don't know. I heard about this. I thought it'd be cool. What are you doing? And I was like, I run this place. This is like, <laughs> you just discovered my secret other life. Um, and later on, Kyle the Beast is out talking to people, and this girl from my work is talking to him, and she's like, oh, where are you from? And he's like, oh, from the woods. <laughs> 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 I love it. Did, I was like, wow, did he go to the after party? <laughs> no. I, he is not he has banned himself. He's I know, himself. I'm just I gotta yeah. check you gotta check in though. You gotta see how the how it's going. He had one taste of the after after party and yeah, he probably was like, I probably need to well, he, he banned himself from after parties. Um post was it absolution? When yeah. he had the, the match against it the wall? After, yeah. yeah, it was after absolution. Yeah. And uh, another thing that I remembered about Kyle the Beast, uh, after he told the girl he was from the woods, is, uh, like, I don't know, like, a day later, he goes, hey, man, I left my wrestling boots at the venue. Did anybody find them? And I was like, Whoa. uh... Yeah, they're in the woods. In there. We put them in the woods. No. And then uh, I never heard from him again. And then at, uh, in December, I was like... What's up with those wrestling boots, man? We never found them. He's like, oh, yeah. Tim Don just grabbed him out of the, my backseat of the car on accident. I got him. And I was like, okay. It wasn't that big of a story, but for a month, I thought we were going to have to replace Kyle the Beast's wrestling boots. <laughs> well, so then you you brawl with Josh Bishop. Mm-hmm. Got some animosity there. More yeah. on that. Yeah, there is. After next I mean, show. there hasn't been a lot, you know, realistically said about this, you know. Obviously, there was the attack after the Akron match of him and Tracy, and it just comes down to this, you know. I've always viewed Josh as kind of like my little brother since he's come to the academy. We're from the same area. Um, can't tell you how many times that kid didn't have gas money, and I drove him to practice. And just kind of over the last year, I guess I thought he would have matured more besides just in the ring, you know, as a human, and he hasn't. And I think I've decided to just take it upon myself to make him mature. And uh, I put it best way of this. Sometimes the big brother's got to check the little brother, and that's kind of where we're at right now. Oh, all right. 
There you have it. Well, Anything to say on that, did Pete? Yeah. Apparently Josh Bishop is, is, as they say, an habitual line stepper. And he yeah. needs he needs to be put in his place. It's okay. I don't have a problem with that. He's tweeting me to take him gambling. And I keep telling him, no, man. The smartest thing you can ever do is never start. Because once you start, you never stop. Trust maybe me. instead yeah. of going gambling, you should come to you know, wrestling practice. Hey, I, maybe. I don't know. Well, the next match we go into, and we talked about it. Stop uh, stealing your dad's fucking monsters out of the fridge is what he should stop doing. I would never <laughs> steal anything if that man was my father. Like, I would take nothing of his. I wouldn't even ask that guy for money. I talked to... I talked Jeez, to, Monst- I talked to- Monsters didn't exist when my dad was alive, but I don't think my dad would have ever said, don't touch my monsters in the, in the refrigerator. I, I talked to his dad at the one show, and he goes, this fucking kid, I buy a 10-pack of monsters. He goes, I go to get one, they're all gone. He drinks all my fucking monsters before I even get one. Well, Stop go. stealing your dad's monsters, man. You got a good job. Pro wrestler. Pay your bills. So he's, got, we, he's got some titles. I mean, come on. He should be now. parlaying that into some, some meet and greets or some, some ch- uh, mall openings or something. I, I was know. confused, and then I remember we discussed his UXWA t- title capture last week. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's got a couple, I think. I'm not going to mention no. any feds, but... That's the only one. Just that one, I think, yeah. Just that one. Oh, I thought there was one they farther did. south. No. Mm-mm. No? Okay. Maybe. All right. So next one we go into, uh, it's Magnum CK's retirement match. It's the tag... Uh, Tag titles ends up being two matches. Uh, we did we try to pull a little bit of swerve there, right? John Thorne, Magnum, they they come out on top. Tells everybody he's not retiring. Yeah, he's the greatest actor on earth. This is I I, I came over this like at like one p.m. one afternoon, and I was <laughs> like, this is what we got to do. I think to get to where we got to go. This might have been a Thanksgiving conversation. To be no, honest. I had I, I, before, I, I, I mm, maybe the day before Thanksgiving. I know, like, I came up with it because I didn't want to, like, I didn't want him to announce it because then I felt that the outcome was going to be predictable. Right. Uh, so once he announced, so once he announced yeah, I it, threw a whole bunch of fucking monkey wrenches and ideas I had. Yeah. So once he, once he announced it, that's just kind of how I like backtracked and put this whole thing together with all the, you know, everything else going on. And of course, it was. Chase and Trey, we've talked about that previously. You talked about it on the episode with Eddie and Swaggle. It was, you know, it was supposed to be those guys. Circumstances change, as they did there. And worldwide, you guys cashed in. Yep, cashed in the old uh, tournament trophies. You actually have to turn in the giant trophies for that to. Ah, uh, they're back in the apartment. Are they okay? Oh, good. But um, we just have to put a little check mark that you cashed in, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I think there's some video record. Yeah, and I will I will clarify because uh, you know I saw some people were saying like when's the next uh, double dare tag team tournament? I don't know, but we are going to do the Chandler Biggins tag team memorial tournament again, Jaylet weekend this year. So uh, just to just to give everybody a full explanation as to how the weird world earned those shots because we never re- I don't know if we re- like sometimes I think we explain things well and then sometimes I think we just think that we explained them so the weird world won the Chandler Biggins Tag Team Memorial Tournament which earned them a money in the bank style cash in whenever they wanted it they wanted then we cashed in a fistful of Biggins bucks and uh, came out with the straps the, the crowd was uh, they reacted well I think to it did they? I couldn't watch. I was I was I was terrified for for uh, worldwide based on everything we covered last week. Uh, I was like a nervous, uh, you know, nervous father. It was one. Of I those, was fine. I mean, it, it was one of those things where they felt if Magnum's going to go down, uh, this is kind of one of the one of the ways we want to see it happen, and uh, they erupted to many cheers. They were very excited about it. Uh, and it, it, it worked did you out well. did you at least feel good at that moment when you did it? Yeah, when the yeah, yeah. It felt, I mean, it felt good holding the straps. Da, 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 da. I mean, you know, obviously I had some other shit in my mind. Hugged Magnum, you know, a little bit of tear skis, and uh, you know, it was, you know, some for him, some for the title, some for my brother, you know, and then you know, just sort of powder into the back so that uh, Magnum could do his thing, and he did his thing. <laughs> I could uh yeah, he do did. his thing. He uh <laughs> he thought he was gonna cut maybe like a five minute promo tops 
uh, after that to say his farewell. And uh, I told him before he went out, I gave him a hug and I said, uh, "Don't go as long as Johnny." <laughs> no, I said, "I said take as much time as you need." Say, you know, because who fucking cares? We're not broadcasting live. We're not on television. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, who cares? Uh, and I was like, uh, get it all out of your system. I knew that he had a lot. Uh, he had a lot fucking probably going. You know, much like you, like uh, he found this out out of nowhere. Right. So it's like he had a lot rattling around up there, and you know, uh, I'm sure he felt very indifferently about everything. Uh, and I was actually honestly bummed because he had his like documentary crew with him, and I guess they missed you. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't yeah, yeah. and they missed me. And like, I mean, I went and told him at one point. I was like, "You were actually like, I mean, obviously there were some events from last year that like you know pushed me to that point. But like, Magnum was like a big motivator in like me finally seeking like you know some like mental health like help and shit." Yeah, he said he was very open about that. And like, you know, I was like, "Well, he did it, and he seems like my kind of crazy, only more motivated." So yeah, I'll fuck with that. He said that uh, he's gonna he's gonna bring that film crew up sometime. Uh, maybe in the next month or two to like uh, get me and uh, probably I assume you you know what I mean uh, hopefully you didn't forget about that Magnum I know you're listening out there he's not listening he's got shows to produce and direct I'm ready to be uh, I'm ready now to you be need in a, a movie dance partner uh, to make you look the most amazing you've ever looked Josh Bishop <laughs> I did I did think that um, you know uh it was pretty noble to take his time that was supposed to be his time and, you know, really take it to address people with, you know, me- mental health issues and things like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, it, I, I don't know. Like, I probably, if that was me, I probably certainly would have been selfish and taken, you know, taken that moment for myself one last time. But, uh, you know, that's just kind of the guy Magnum was. He's kind of, you know, like a you know, selfless, selfless guy. So. Uh, you know, I thought that was that was pretty good. Uh, it 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 was a roller coaster ride, though. Oh that, yeah, that that speech. It was, it was it was sad. It was weird. It was uh, uncomfortable at times with the you know the the how in depth he went about you know certain things in his life. Right. Uh, it was happy. You know what I mean? There was it was a wide range of emotions. It it, it was much like the life that he has led. Uh, he tried to kind of encapsulated all of it right there and ended it of course with uh singing Mandy kaufman uh which was fun that was different for us in a farewell speech i will say that first time first time there usually we just yeah know. i was in the uh, locker room just uh sipping on some vodka and you know maybe pulling some headhunter shit because we're about to be out of that building anyway you smoked in the building no i didn't i wish i did that would have been a good lie but no, not headhunter status. Or parka, or L.A. Park status. Because he was ripping a heater or two at certain points. Yeah. With his arsenal of fucking monsters. <laughs> Dude. Did, did he get it from Josh Bishop's dad? No, he, he the, the, the Rick Nelson donation went right into fucking LaBarca's bag. <laughs> <laughs> If you listen, if you listen to the podcast a couple of weeks ago, I've I commentate on it as it's happening, and then you hear him crack one open in the background. <laughs> the park just getting paid. He didn't Every pack any way. fucks. He packed all his gear, but didn't nope. pack any fucks. None given. Man, so, uh, it, it was it the was, ultimate carny. It it was a sight to see though, like La, like Laparka in like his full gear without his mask on. I'm gonna say this about Laparka. Sort of surprisingly handsome, but still scary as shit without the mask on. No, he was grizzled. He was fucking. fucking No, he was fucking so ugly that he was fucking handsome. And I I would never even. I'm afraid to say it right now because I feel like he might just murder me. When he first showed up, he 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 first showed up, he had like a ski mask on, so you couldn't even see his face. He did look like a guy that's probably murdered. Oh, yeah. He did look like a guy that's probably murdered somebody before, you know? I see. I see what you're saying, though. Like, like Laparca has probably pulled some fucking Latinas. We've seen like some. Yeah, because he's famous. Some of these Rico Casick bank supermodels. You're you're famous. You're famous. You're not pulling any supermodels. I'm not famous. How am I famous? You're a fucking (laughs) star. You're a star of fucking absolute intense (laughs) wrestling. Fucking casinos and shit. Yeah, I'm famous because they want my money, not because you're a featured. You're a featured performer on absolute intense wrestling. Oh well, it's not getting me what it should be. Remember, you said you were selling me. You're paying me in dreams. Yeah. You better pony up. Well, that's, More I, dreams? 
I don't support prostitution. Well, I didn't say that. Oh my. Well, that took an interesting turn. Exactly. So well, anyway, so anyway, anyway, anyhow, we go to intermission. Intermission ends. Then we have a tag match to Infinity and Beyond taking on PME. And uh, I will say PME doesn't come out on top in this match, but. Uh, I don't know if you guys are paying attention to the live crowd. I obviously am out there pretty much the entire time. Huge PME chance at the end of this match from I did hear those. the packed out crowd at Mount Carmel. So you're saying I should have put them over for I the tag mean, titles and not I don't know. the weird world here. Well, tonight. we got the weird world out of our system. So you, had yeah, to, you, had, you, you had to facilitate the cash in somehow. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, oh, yeah. And as far as PME chance, those are fun. But I'm just going to jostle y'all. Good times. Good vibes. Just saying. Just saying. It's right fucking there. You want that instead of PME, huh? Well, no. We can take the PME, Either too. One. I'm just like, yeah, yeah I'd like to give them some options. Sure, yeah. A couple that's, like, like, that's like the hot tag chant, you know? Good yeah. times. Good vibes. Yeah. Got to get Philly on that. Philly's got to start leading those chants on the eight. Philly's a little too angry sometimes, man. <laughs> <laughs> Philly's, got, Philly's got an angry streak to him. That's very true. Philly's, uh, Philly's in the worldwide spot on uh, PME. We're the Husky boys that are always generally pissed or at ourselves or somebody else after the match. And then you guys got to go out on repeaters. Oh, yeah. Time. So this is my out. favorite pictures ever. Worldwide and Philly ripping heaters before their match at the birthday party. Oh, oh, who has great. the better 70s style look? Philly or worldwide? Worldwide. I've been... I've been multiple places in the real world with Worldwide, and strangers just come and take a photo with him. Yeah, worldwide, they yeah, assume he is famous for something. Because worldwide, worldwide wears that look every day of his life. Not just like, you know, like <coughs> Philly's got to look within a match, but then outside Philly, of it. Philly will just have on like a hoodie or something outside, yeah. you know? He hasn't got those Philly, locks Philly flowing. Needs- Philly needs uh, a worldwide makeover, is what you're saying. It's not as expensive as you think, Philly. You know, well, I don't. I right wouldn't shot. think it's expensive at all, quite frankly. I think you need a worldwide makeover. I do. Worldwide. Oh, hey, I got the blonde hair. Worldwide's got some success <laughs> with the ladies. Maybe we'll put a worldwide. We'll have him put a gimmick on you. Take you out to now this class. Different worlds, man. I guess, hey, they got dartboards now. It's a good time. We just run in, run in different circles. Man. I get wardrobed by worldwide once a year, and it's always a hit so far. Uh, let's same. get you. Let's get you in that circle. Yeah, you, said you play crew. darts. Get Magnum's film crew, and we'll make it happen. All right, that's in a whole other documentary, or maybe uh, <laughs> some Patreon exclusive content. Yeah, we got our own film crew. We make it. Yeah, we're happen. gonna get. We're, we're kicking that. We're, we're this time off that we're taking. We're gonna. Dom is gonna take over this Patreon thing. We're gonna come up with a plan. We're gonna maybe start mailing stuff out. We'll see. Got some business meetings. Uh, maybe get some worldwide exclusive podcasts. Yeah, we'll put that up there for a buck. You know something. All right, so. This next match, I mean, maybe one of my favorites for some time, and it certainly we end up with an AIW first. Lewis Linden, Eho. Oh, before Park. before you go before you go on, yeah, uh, I just want to say that to Infinity and Beyond requested that they wrestle PME. Oh, really? Yes, uh, they've been requesting it for months because uh, you know they see a lot of potential in them and wanted to you know wanted to. Run them, uh, run them through the ringer a little bit and see how they would do. Uh, and, uh, you know, the going over thing, it was like a coin flip. But, uh, you know, my next thought was, well, Worldwide has had two good matches that I know of. And, uh, the, you know, it was either Magnum CK or two Infinity Beyond across the ring from him. So. Or a bunch <laughs> of uh, death matches. Yeah, well... I wasn't there for that. I was in the hospital. Oh, I was in there for one. Yeah, you were there you were for one. In, of them. You were in one of the. Yeah, you matches. stuck your nose in one of them. Yeah. Well, oh, man. Oh. tension. It's like I uh, I've been telling people lately. I mean, if uh, my career just came down to like you know, I don't know, six to eighteen, like you know, weird shindy and like birthday party matches, and then like five to six like death matches a year, I'd be happy with that. <laughs> Goals, man. Well, all right, then. <laughs> Pop up pro. Everyone else is getting depressed because they're not getting contract offers. Worldwide wants less. He wants to do more birthday party yeah. bookings. More birthday Who parties. Want to do more birthday parties. Those are fun. Birthday parties and death matches. That's all I want. You got to. You know what? We got to get a uh, bachelorette party. That's what we got to get next for Pop Up Pro. Wow. Get on that, Steve guy. You know. You know some ladies. You run in that entertainment circle. Find <laughs> or one of those bachelor bachelor parties. 
Well, we already did one of those. No, well, no, no bachelor, bachelor. When they have them together. Oh, 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 god! Gay got bachelor okay. parties. Oh, what I'm oh, uh, oh, that's I where. Don't well, know. yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. You, I don't know you that's like fence. I'm ready to jump over. I thought he said bachelor. <laughs> bachelor red parties. Wow, what's, wrong, what's wrong with there? that? Uh, I don't know. You're not ready for that? I don't think I'm ready. I am not. You ready versus it. You versus Trey. A lot of like you know holds. <laughs> what do what do they what do they refer to Duke? In, I mean, uh, Duke would be a bear. I oh think. yeah, bear? I know that much. Yeah. And then okay. Trey's like, you know, just a nice otter. <laughs> otter? Otter. It's like halfway between. It's like a evolved twink, as I understand it. Evolved what? An evolved twink. Oh, I, I okay. Oh, I, I understand that. I understand We're that. But things. otter was not the phraseology I think I'd go with because it's a real thing. It's an it's an animal. So it's a bear. So it's so a, a bear. bear yeah. but a twink isn't. Oh well, yeah. What's a twink? Uh, Twink is like, you know, a very skinny, you know, sort of hairless. Oh, okay. Little pretty man. <laughs> yeah. so we got we to get back on the All rails right. here. Well, so anyway. I almost made a comment. The FCC is going to send you an email if we don't get oh, back on the rails. They don't listen to this. <laughs> well, they won't know until they get into it. It's going to be Kaplan, highly downloadable Ka- now. Kaplan episode, low, lowest, the, the low, lowest of all time. Yes. Really? You can't admit that was Yes. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Low <laughs> Lower so than get the download and Swoggle episode. Get the download and people. Right. Our, our 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 listenership is 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 down across the board. Mike. Well, we have had the Duke on. A I lot haven't been on later. for a while. I have not been on for Same. a while. No, you. We recorded one session of a bunch of. Well, how the Josh Prohibition ones do? Nah. Well, those went well. All right. Yeah. All right. Look. Anyway, next <laughs> match we go into Lewis Linden, Iho de la Park, Flip Kendrick, Facade, Laredo Kid, and Gringo Loco. And at the end of this match, the fans throw dollars into the ring. It was pretty they good. Did? Yes. I tell you what, people for as much of a pain in the it. ass as LaParque turned out to be, his, his El Hio del LaParque he- yeah. was pretty freaking good. I mean, uh, I, I, I will say I'll say this. Two things I'm gonna say. One, uh he's a little rough around the edges, you know. All but the they, doors are though. That Canadian destroyer he hit. Uh, yeah, unbelievable. Two, uh, we had like some uh, like WCW fucking music queued up for him, and before he went out, he said no. Uh, he went to Traxler, I guess. Uh, when I wasn't back there, he said uh, no. Uh, Enter Sandman, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> he came out to Enter Sandman, and it was the most uncomfortable entrance of all time. Oh, that was L.A. Park, yes. Yeah. No, that was he no L- oh, yeah. He, oh, that's right. He did have Enter Sandman. Oh, so uncomfortable yeah. about it. Because it's the Sandman no, theme. Not the Sandman. Because he wasn't, because he wasn't, he wasn't there. the Sandman. Yeah, but like he's been in Adam before. People expect that. <sighs> that or they expect the Weird World to come out dressed like the Sandman and beat the shit out of everybody and, in the match. And that was the thing. There were a lot of people, uh, like trash talking him in the crowd as that's happening. I'm hearing it. Yeah. But then the match. That's starts. because who do you sit next to all the time? No, I mean like while I'm standing in the ring. I'm oh. standing in the ring. I, I'm hearing it from. I mean, like ball. when I heard it, I was like, "What the fuck?" You know what I mean? And I didn't like, even. I didn't even notice. It didn't but like, this must be a luchador thing, like that, because uh, Dave the Potato told me at some other shows that he was on with like Hoovy and other places. All the luchadors always request Enter Sandman. So I, may, I don't know. Yeah, or, or that's like the song that they know that Americans like or something. I don't know. It could be, yeah. But I was like, oh, God, this guy is doomed. Maybe it gets you over in Mexico, maybe. They, they I was like, this guy is doomed. But, uh, but he, he, was, he was impressive. This, this whole match was, I mean, this is unbelievable. This match was nuts. The guys flying all over the place and pulling off things that, you know, a lot of them, we obviously just about all of them except for Iho, have been in AIW before, but they were doing stuff that me sitting ringside, I haven't seen them do in AIW before, and I don't know if it was just you, you've got. Well, you get like you're you, elevated because you, get, you have this yeah, guy but you here. get you get Gringo in there who's with somebody who no one has seen before. Base he's gonna, he's yeah. gonna go. I'm gonna do this weird fucking flip, and Gringo's like, absolutely, I'll just be here, you know, yeah, whatever. I'll catch you. Yeah. yeah, so like he's. He lets those people do some of those weird things, which is pretty cool. And there's a couple things that they miss on, and like it didn't even matter. Like no. nobody even gave a shit. Nobody cared because everything that they hit was out of this world. So, and I don't, I wouldn't even call it a spot fest because everything just kept flowing. You know, it just, I don't know that this one ever really slowed down. So if if you if you're looking for something, if you're looking for excitement, I mean, I heard that list card. of names when you're uh, saying it just now, and I was dizzy just thinking about it. So, all the all the list of names. Uh, so if you're looking for another reason to download this show, 
and uh, as a an MP4 or to purchase it on DVD, other than our next match, which is LA Park and Nick Gage, this would be a match to do it, of course, or other than Magnum CK retiring. Like I said, top to bottom, man, what a what a show this was. And uh, so then we go to LA Park and Nick Gage. And uh, <laughs> more entrance music here. I don't, do you remember this one, Thorne? Yeah, well, he he comes out to the WCW stock music, but he screams at Traxler, bad to the bone, bad to the bone. And, like, I, I said some swear words in Spanish, I, I guess. So he wanted bad God. to the bone. Yeah, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He and couldn't have go. mentioned that when he was sitting 10 feet away from Traxler signing. He couldn't have, when he walked by him, said, hey. I guess we were supposed to know. I don't know. I don't watch fucking. I suppose we could have asked Mexican wrestling, really. I, I just read. I, I just read. I just read what's what's hot, you know. And I go with that. I don't. I don't. I haven't watched any of the parks. I asked no. Him, I mean, CMLL matches. Yes. I asked him what he wanted for an introduction, and then he kept laughing and just kept saying more and more different things. Now, "Bad to the Bone" was in his intro, so I guess that makes sense of why he would want that as a song. But. Uh, he just so you knew and didn't tell anybody. I didn't know that he wanted it as a song. I just knew he wanted to be referred to. He gave me what it was in Spanish, and then wanted me to say it in English as well. And I was like, "All right, sure." And we had a whole uh, it's like a mini Spanish class of him helping me uh, pronounce the town and the monikers that he wanted. It was a great time. But did this live up? Did you watch it, John Thorne? You booked this. Uh, and this was like. I mean, it was good. It was. I mean, it was good. You know what I mean? It was. This was one of those things that it didn't matter what happened after it started. It was like one of those things to where it was like, uh, on paper, it was always going to be urban legend no matter what. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, I, you know, they definitely did some stuff. Uh, I I think that you know they had a little bit of trouble with the language barrier, sure, a bit, um, because you know there was like a, a same guy, same same deal like there was like a translator on the phone trying to translate the match back and forth when they're trying to figure it out uh but yeah i thought it was good you know what i mean like they did some chair stuff and uh you know it was brawl brawled around and uh dom's watching youtube videos yeah, not watching paying attention YouTube videos here but uh yeah so you know i thought i thought it was good um it's pulling up some cmll the park to check entrance music there was a there was a moment that did make it not Matthew Botchamania tweeted it out not because it was a botch but because it was so enjoyable where LA Park just puts Nick Gage down and then sits on a chair in the corner and puts his feet on him and then it's like just a one count and he gets up and he's all surprised by it and pissed off. Oh yeah, I, I that. mean he, like that, that got that got me well. That's there. kind of that's kind you of were, thing. That's the kind of thing where as a wrestler, like he was probably trying to punk Gage a little bit and like. Well, we were we were watching it off to the side. And yeah, I, I don't. It was it was myself and Eric Ryan, and I think Cheech was over there, and I don't know who else was there. Most most of the guys that had already worked that were still around were there. We were watching the show, and. You could kind of tell there was something a little off. It looked like there was something a little off right before it started, mm-hmm. and we're all kind of wondering, oh, is this gonna like, is this gonna go bad? Is this gonna turn into something ridiculous, or what's gonna happen? So, uh, we put a bet on how long they would go, and uh, I just I we we set up we set eleven forty five I think was the over under on how long they would go, and. I took under, and I think they went eleven fifty five. They just they we almost called it right on the head, wow. and but you could just tell there was something a little off. But then once they got going, yeah, it kind of it smoothed out, and they were giving and taking, and so it was okay. But it just looked like L.A. Park was not. It looked like he was kind of in a mood, like when they went out there, like right before the bell rang. Okay, so I, I don't probably know. because he didn't hear bat to the bone. Maybe that was it. I don't know. Yeah. Well, Could have been it. From there, we go into uh, the intense title match between Tim Donst and Matthew Justice. And uh, this again, this was another one. This is a wild one. This was wild. Uh, I mean, you know, we don't got to break down the whole thing. The big thing is they break the they, ramp. Right. They go through the ramp. Not just break it. Through the ramp goes Matthew Justice. Yeah, so, he went through that thing. <laughs> when when he hit him, 
I don't know if it didn't break right away because there was like a little bit of a delay, but then all of a sudden he was gone. It was almost like <laughs> no, he went. Of, he went right. No, through. no, I'm saying it, there was like a pause where he was like yeah. hovering about. It was like when Augustus Gloop was in the pipe. It like was he like, couldn't. <laughs> he couldn't get through, and then all of a sudden he just shot right out, and he was gone. It what was I like would, what I would compare it to is if you've ever played the game uh, cornhole with like the bean bags, and you know you throw one. And uh, there's like it just sits there, and, and there's one that just sits boom, there right on the edge. Yeah, and then you have like another one, and it's kind of keeping it on. Tim yeah. Donst was like the other bag, kind of right. keeping him on, and then he kind of moves just a little bit, and then that's when Matt just drops. Uh, man, what a this is just another one, and it'll, it's a wild one. Yeah, and that's what you've. Come I wasn't to too happy about that ramp break, and I'll tell you that. No, no, not at all. <laughs> Thought you wanted to save it for the rest of uh, all the matches we ever have? Wanted to save it for like the rest of like the existence of AIW? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would like, I would like <laughs> the to. The rest of the show, at least. <laughs> well, it got, it got fixed, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. It, it got fixed. Well, it fixed sort of. There's, uh, next show I'm watching, and uh, there's a little bit of a. A little bit of a hole in there, I think. Again, oh. so no, not totally fixed. It, it, it not needs, totally it, fixed. It needs a little. It needs a little work. But still. Uh, and then we roll into uh, the absolute title match between Hot Sauce, Tracy William, your champion, and Eddie Kingston. And this is uh, what the trifecta for them. Yes. I mean, in they've had two two really, really... I don't think they were all in 2018. Weren't they? No. no. Yeah. No. No. I don't. Well, this one was a J-Lit uh, one was in 2017. 2017. Yeah. yeah. This right. is the third match, and you know they've had two really, really good ones. I think this one live it up to uh to the hype uh, i don't know if, how you guys feel about it but oh yeah this this uh as as people would say this match is real ass kicker if, like if you go back and watch it is that what people would say yeah it's a real ass kicker it really is ass-kicker. um no it's just tracy and eddie went out there and they just they really just beat the shit out of each other and uh i did ask somebody at the after party how i was that's what they said why so they you left exactly. huh you left i did not stay for the entire show what? Wow! Wow! Where, where'd you go? Wow. Well, there was a there was a short someone what that it? couldn't wait to get to the after party. Yeah, so and he made the Duke take him. Swaggle there and I were we had to go stool it up at uh, Funhouse. You were stooling, huh? We were stooling it up at the Funhouse. You yeah. and Swaggle are becoming. I, I don't know about this duo. Oh, oh, more on that in the next show. Uh oh, more on that. <laughs> more on that duo no, when we get to the next shows. After definitely, party. like you could see a lot of like Tracy and Eddie's kind of. Their backgrounds brought out, especially Eddie, you know, using all of this uh, American top team training that he's got going on yeah. right now. And um, you could definitely see, like, the All Japan uh, influences in both of them. And I, it was just a really great match. I think uh, what I loved about this trilogy in AIW that they've had now is that every match kind of has its own story, I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, every every three one, completely separate matches. Yeah, and they were all very hard hitting mm-hmm. and fantastic, but they were all different. And uh, I mean, it's like they keep yeah. trying to top the one they. I did mean, ha- having wrestled both those guys this year, and you know, Tracy a lot in the past. That's kind of what I, I know that those guys strive for when they're putting together their matches, and they 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 want something to be different, you know, and and they definitely most of the time succeed with that. And so then, from there, that wrapped up our last, our final show at Mount Carmel. Uh, thankfully, nothing terrible. Oh, L.A. Park did throw the ring bell at uh, fans. That happened. This, this, hit the guard this is actually why the Duke likes L.A. Park more than anybody, because do you know what fan he threw the ring bell at, Duke? <laughs> That's not why. I, li- I, li- <laughs> I like L.A. Park because I think he was. I liked him back in the day. I mean, I'm not going to discount the fact that he... That he threw the ring bell at Thrift Store Drop yeah. on Ron Two Legs? I mean, I'm sure he had. You could call me reason. Ron. I'm sure that? you could call me Ron, right? Yeah, you I'm sure. Ron. I'm sure he had a valid reason. Yeah, I don't remember what bad, it was. They didn't play bad to the bone. He thought it was their fault. Uh, he. Oh yeah, he did also uh, suggest that they perform a certain act on him too. Oh. L.A. Park not able to speak a lot of English. Yeah, he knows that one. Huh? But he knows that one. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that that was definitely shouted at them. I was like, "Oh my!" I fine. forgot that it had happened until just now. Well, I don't think that's. I think it's a high note to end on there, Steve. Yeah, and there's not much to say about the after party. It was our last one at the fun house. I want to thank them. Uh, Swackle did get a little out of hand. He uh, he did pull a, he did pull a plant out of the ground or something, and uh, oh, 
I just know that I was drunk and I picked up that plant and I bowled it right at that motherfucker and I took him out. <laughs> <laughs> like it was like, how did was, you knock him down? He has such a low center of gravity because it was like a potted plant, so it was like the dirt part. You know what I mean? Like yeah, he like pulled it out and it was like still like the roots I and all the dirt. At him. <laughs> and I and I, I gave it like a fucking girl softball pitch at him. You know what I mean? And it just hit him dead on. <laughs> he he just went right to the airport. Uh, on this night. Oh, did he? he had an early flight, I think. Actually, speaking of after party stuff, shout out to Stacy Silvers who got stickers oh, of, yes. the, of the Mount Carmel Tiger. The Mount Carmel oh, Tiger. Yeah. I think mine's still in my car. I hope mine I still is as have well. it. I think I still <laughs> I have it. I put that on my, on my gear bag. Yeah, uh, that was great. Yeah, it was pretty. Like, uh, I can't think of anything really out of hand that happened at the after party um, to, my, to my total it's knowledge. Crowded. Yeah, that very crowded. Was, that's very true. One of our best attended after parties. Very crowded. Uh, shout out to the fun house. I think uh, staff was oh, okay. a little overwhelmed, you got, you, do, I think. Do you want a Dom, instructor Dom freakout story then? From the after party? Uh, leading up to the after party, sure. Uh-oh. So uh, we were running a little late um, on, the, on, the, on the cleanup, and Thorne gave very specific directions to myself and Weird Body. Uh, make sure this place is spick and span, and we don't want him to yell at us for anything. It's right. our last time. And uh, it's about one forty-five. I, I want. I want to try to keep the. I want to try to keep the door, door open if it happens. Open. No, that's hey, smart that's, move. That's very smart. So it's about one forty-five. Uh, I have to be in Philadelphia the next more the next day for a show, and um, I'm actually taking hot sauce Tracy Williams with me, and um, I go upstairs after cleaning the entire basement, and I see there is just a, a huge mess still at one forty-five, which this is way later than we have ever been there. Yeah. So I then start to notice people leaving. Students leaving. Oh. And uh, this, as always, infuriates me. So I happen to go out and see Wes Barkley, Parker Pierce, and um, student Xavier in Wes Barkley's car. And I, Wes Barkley's front door is open. I go, Wes, where are you guys going? He's like, oh, we're, we're, we're leaving. And I said, no, you're fucking not. I said, it's a fucking mess in there. I said, it's 145. I said, Get back in there. And Parker Pierce. There's still a mess in there at 145. I don't know. We didn't even sell beer. Par- yeah. Show. Parker Pierce gives me like this dumbfounded look, and I go, Listen here, man. I've watched you cut out of cleaning to go to the after parties. Get your fucking ass in there. They then proceeded to clean up until uh, everything was done, and uh, yeah, sometimes you gotta lay the boom down, I guess. Yeah. And then, then it looked nice after that. As nice as it could look. Well, all right. Oh, also. For all the times we've struggled cleaning the floor, uh, Weird Body noticed that there is actually like a floor cleaning machine in there that night. So yes, we spent the floor all this time, and, yeah. yeah, and we've been just struggling. That's with, kind of above and beyond, though. With, I well, mean, I mean, hey, it probably would have made our, our mopping easier at the end of the night if yeah. we were using that instead. Mm-hmm. But well, R.I.P. Go. Mount Carmel. Yeah, well, I guess thanks to Mount Carmel for the time they had us there. But thanks to the Funhouse, of course. Uh, thanks to bartender Jessica and Stosh, the owner, always taking care of us. My favorite thing at the end of the night, he said, hey, if you guys need to have an after party anywhere else, you can have them call or hit me up, and I'll gladly give a reference and tell them you guys are the greatest after party. <laughs> so, well, thanks, Stosh. Appreciate that. Yeah, the one person working at Nax will pick up the phone and get that, ah! get that reference. Yeah, you hope so. Hey, they had more people last time. They did. They did they have did. more people last time. So that uh, that wraps it up for our time at Mount Carmel, for now at least. We'll try to leave that door open. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed that show. I know that uh, we all did, and obviously we enjoyed our time there. But uh, we move on. And please, please buy it on DVD because uh, you know we got a lot, we got a lot of expensive things coming up around the horizon. So uh, <laughs> yes, we do. Smartmarkvideo.com. Buy some AIW stuff because uh, we're spending a lot of money, and uh, you know our. So he our doesn't venues, have to ask me. Please, our venues are a bit please more expensive. Buy all the downloads you can. Yeah, yeah unless you want the Duke to be majority if, owner. If I start throwing money and I'm getting creative control, oh, like we don't want that. Sharp. We don't want, want that. If you want the Duke to be majority owner <laughs> and creative right. control at AIW. Uh, then don't. But I think that most of you don't want that. So. I'm getting a little nervous about these WrestleMania tickets. I thought you know, we, money. I thought we would be halfway sold out. Yeah, we're we're still under that. Man, so I thought that that Reddit deal with the Steiner Swoggle announcement was gonna <sighs> put us over the top. But we'll you got to give them another match. 
Well, we're we're working on it. We're, I, I I look at the card and I re I've rebooked it one oh, thousand yeah. well, times. You, you got to find something that's in concrete and you got to let that go. You got to give them another. Who isn't signed? Who's not getting signed? It's, there's I a lot get of questions it. In I get it. I get it. We'll talk. Well, that'll be a whole other podcast. We're gonna have to start signing people exclusively. Worldwide is gonna take off, man. I mean, you already have the weird world on that exclusive contract. There so. it is. Okay. Good. Good luck getting us out of that. Glad other promotions. How long is that contract? <laughs> You know, I haven't checked contract. the fine print in a while, but uh, is it for life? It's a it's a Scientology contract. It's a billion years. Oh shit! Wow. All right. Well, that's gonna do it for like I said from Mount Carmel, but uh, not for 2018. We will cover that uh, next time you listen to AIW's. The card is going to change. In the meantime, I'm gonna call my lawyers <laughs> for the Duke, for Worldwide, for Dom Guarini, for John Thorne. My name's Steve Guy, and we'll talk to you next week, everybody. <laughs>